Hey, what's going on everyone? So I have the iPhone 15 Pro Max and today I'm going to be doing an unboxing for it. So stick around to discover the new features that make this iPhone a must have for a select few of us and to see if you fall into that category. I wanna go over my first impressions of the phone, the pros and cons, and if I actually recommend you should pick one up. And make sure you stick around to the end of the video to find out the secret word. I'm gonna be doing a giveaway for some Pataka gear that I was sent to review worth over $300 once I cross 1500 subscribers. Full rules will be posted in the description. All right, so you have the typical iPhone box that we've all gotten used to seeing over the past few years with Apple trying to cut down on size and be more eco-friendly. You'll see when you open the box, we have the iPhone itself, which looks just so good. Some documentation, and it now comes with the braided USB-C cable, which of course is a first for any iPhone. This thing looks nice, and looks like we can finally ditch all the lightning cables you have lying around the house. So this year we got four colors to choose from on the Pro models, which are all made out of titanium. We get the traditional black and white variants, a new looking blue, and of course the natural titanium. I have to say that natural titanium looks really nice and even better in person. I didn't pre-order this year, which is kind of a long story and they only had the black titanium in stock, but if all the phones were laid out on the table, I would definitely go with the natural color. When you first pick this phone up, it is light. Like, make no mistake, this is not made from the stainless steel like in the past few years. On paper, the few ounces, it didn't seem like much, but you can definitely tell while holding it. I might be the minority here, but I'm not totally sure I like the lighter feeling. I'm hoping that it grows on me in the next few days while I'm using it day to day. But let me know your thoughts. If you've picked one up, do you like the lighter feel or do you prefer the heft of the stainless? Okay, so moving on. I absolutely love the textured matte glass finish on this year's phone. I've heard and seen a few stories about how easily it breaks, but we'll see how that holds up over time. It's partly due to Apple making it easier and cheaper to repair or replace than before, so hopefully this is a good move in the right direction. If you're worried about the durability of this phone, you can always throw it in a case. Just not the fine woven case from Apple. <laughs> I mean, kidding aside, I don't really know anything about it as I haven't gotten my hands on one myself but there's been a lot of backlash in the community about it. Not sure why they replaced the leather one with this option, but if risk is not in your genetic makeup, you can always go with a silicone case or any of the third party cases and I'm sure you'll be just fine. I personally tend to use my phones caseless and have for years. I don't know, I just like to appreciate the phone the way it was designed and I think it tends to look better in its true form. The band encasing the phone is more rounded than on previous models that had the more squared, sharper edges which feels really nice in the hand. It definitely attracts fingerprints, but nothing like the previous models that were made of stainless steel. The screen size has remained the same at 6.1 inches on the Pro and 6.7 inches on the Pro Max. Both are Super Retina XDR 120Hz ProMotion displays, still pumping out the same 1600 nits peak brightness in HDR and 2000 while outdoors, and the bezels have slightly been reduced. You still get the dynamic island like you did on last year's model that displays different notifications or information depending on what you're doing. This was actually one of the main features that I wanted coming from the 13 Pro Max. So taking a look around the sides, we still have the power button on the right and the volume up and down buttons on the left. So we've lost the silent switch and it's been replaced by this all new action button. I'm actually really excited to try this out and see what can be done with it to improve my workflow. It still has the ability to switch between silent and normal mode, but also is completely customizable and can be programmed to launch various shortcuts or apps. From what I've seen going around, everyone is mapping the camera to this button. I just kind of find that a little redundant as it's right on the home screen. I'm gonna be playing around with it and see what I can use best for this scenario, but I'm thinking of programming a shortcut to it. Just haven't figured out which one yet. Another brand new feature that was introduced this year is the USB-C port. I know Androids have had this for years, but it's still a welcome addition to iPhones by many. It'll be nice to not have to carry around so many different cables while traveling or, you know, just have them laying around your house. It is worth mentioning that the cable that comes with the phone is a USB-C 2.0, whereas the port is a 3.0, which means the port is capable of 10 gigabyte per second transfer speeds, but it'll be limited by the provided cable. I really like that you can plug an external SSD into the phone itself for either more storage or the convenience of just recording to the drive and plugging directly into the computer. I think one of the biggest advantages of working inside the Apple ecosystem is when I'm done recording the footage from my iPhone, I can airdrop the footage and start editing. 
After I adopted that workflow, it's just so much easier than messing with SD cards, cables, and all that stuff. So we'll see how this plays out. The front camera is still 12 megapixels and still has the three cameras set up on the back of the phone, so nothing new there. As for the internals, there's the main 24 millimeter lens, the ultra wide 13 millimeter lens, and the new 120 millimeter lens. The main 24 millimeter lens has an f-stop of 1.78 and is now 48 megapixels. This is the lens that typically gets used by the majority of people and what I personally use for most of my Instagram photos. The ultra wide comes with an f-stop of 2.2 and is 12 megapixels. I love the wide angles you can get with this lens, but I'm not crazy about the noise that gets introduced in a lot of the shots. The third and final lens has an f-stop of 2.8 and comes with a 3x telephoto for the Pro and a 5x telephoto for the Pro Max. Both offer the same features including being able to shoot video at 4K 60, 4K HDR at 30fps, and up to 240fps in slow motion shots. I typically only use 4K 30 while recording these videos, but I may give the ProRes log footage a go and see what it's all about here in the future videos. Log mode has everyone most excited for this iPhone release. It gives you greater range and more flexibility in terms of color grading your footage to further close the gap between iPhones and professional cameras. It's also worth mentioning that the chip has been upgraded from the A16 to the A17 Pro, which is blazing fast and will run games far smoother and quicker. This is a huge step in the right direction as far as gaming goes, now having the ability with advanced ray tracing and even the addition of Resident Evil, Assassin's Creed and the like coming to mobile, which is absolutely incredible. You can even pair a PS5 controller with it for mobile gaming on a long road trip. Battery life really hasn't changed too much. It's still putting out about 23 hours on the Pro and 29 hours on the Max. Storage is relatively the same too. You can get anywhere from 128 gigs up to one terabyte on the Pro while the Pro Max starts at 256. I've opted for the 256 over the past few years as I pretty regularly offload the footage that I film and I have iCloud storage so I really see no need for the bigger ones for my personal use. Prices start at $999 for the Pro and $1199 for the Pro Max and increase by $100 each storage tier upgrade. Whether you should go for the Pro or the Pro Max really comes down to personal preference and your specific use case scenario. Do you prefer a smaller footprint so you barely feel it in your pocket? Or do you want the best cameras available on an iPhone? Do you need external SSD support and log recording? I think the final question to ask yourself would be, is it worth upgrading to the 15 after everything we've discussed? For me, I'm not entirely sure yet. I do love the upgrades, but like I mentioned, I'm not completely sold on the weight. Also, I've been having some overheating issues and this thing has been getting hot to the touch while not really doing much other than day-to-day -day tasks. I do like the features added in terms of content creation, so I may just cross my fingers that Apple sorts out the overheating issue with a software update, and the weight is something I'll get used to. I think for most people, if you have a 12 or below, it might be worth upgrading to take advantage of the new features. But if you have a 13 or even a 14, unless you're using your phone daily to create content and want the latest and greatest, I, I don't think the cost is generally worth it for the majority. Well guys, that about wraps it up. That was the unboxing of my iPhone 15 Pro Max. I hope you liked it, and if you stayed until the end, drop a husky in the comments, and I'll give you a thumbs up. If you really did enjoy today's video, you can check out my iPad unboxing, or stay tuned for more Apple content. Thanks for watching.